Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Harlequin Coho here. You asked for it, therefore I shall deliver. This is going to be our first big old four versus four game on the map Steel Pact. Now, just before this gets started and gets all crazy, I figured I'd go ahead and give us an overview of who these players are, take a look at the map, what sort of strategies we can expect, and then just kind of let this game happen naturally, because there's just going to be tons of action going on, and I doubt I'll be able to see all of it. So uh, let's take a look at the Axis players first. In the upper right-hand corner, we've got McKay, who's going to be our terror uh, terror commander on this team. Uh, in three Three versus three ladder. He is ranked number 27. His partner to his left is going to be Verse. This is Verse. I will just call him Verse because it's easier and I'm a dumb American and I cannot pronounce uh, strange looking names. Uh, he is a defensive commander and is number 34 on the thir three versus three ladder. Uh, across the way, we do have uh, Schweib, Sweeb, Swibe, Schwebe. I'll call him Sweeb because, again, dumb American, can't pronounce a lot of cool looking German names and that sort of thing. So uh, he is going to be our Blitzkrieg commander. Uh, I believe he is also ranked. Uh, 36 on the 3 versus 3 ladder. And then we have Leon Ra, who is our final Blitzkrieg commander, uh, ranked 35. So pretty much we've got double Blitzkrieg here on the left and Terror and Defense here on the right. And uh, all these players are in the top 40-ish kind of area, between tw you know top 20, top 40 kind of area. So let's look at the allied players. Uh, first off on the left, we have Giannis GR. Now I stopped as soon as I saw his name because I have seen him a lot in the ladders. Uh, he is ranked number two on the three versus three ladder in Armor Commander. Uh, Airco Goodfe, Goodfe. Airco is a airborne commander, as everyone with the word air in their name seems to be. He is ranked 14 on the 1v1 ladder. Across the way, we have Hush Hush, who's going to be another airborne, uh, sorry, another armored commander. He's ranked six on the 3v3 ladder. And we have Ahist, Aheste, Ahist, I'll call him Ahist, uh, who is also an armor commander, and he is ranked number 24 on the 3v3 ladder. So, to summarize, the allies have triple armor and one airborne, and the Axis have got Terror and Defense on one side and Double Blitzkrieg on the other. Axis in the top 20 to 30 area, allies, uh, kind of a re really close in the top 10 area, a bunch of them. So let's take a look at this map real quick from the uh, command point of view here in the tactical map and look at the fuel distribution. That's the first thing we want to note. Uh, well, first quick thing to note is we've got double five point uh, munitions for the allies on this side, whereas we have a single 10 point munitions for the Axis. Um, that also includes this zone here. So uh, interesting enough. However, uh, we'll look at the fuel distributions on this map and we'll see that the uh, Axis have two uh, closer fuels here, which is going to be this 10 cap here and this five one here. And then one kind of easy gimme fuel, which is kind of close to one of their starting bases, this five fuel here. This is mirrored by the allies who have five and ten in the center, and then one very close uh, five fuel here on the left-hand side. So the name of the game for this, for the most part, is going to be put pressure on those fuel points so that you can get late game advantages with uh, tanks and that sort of thing. So you'll notice everybody has one uh, kind of a freebie... Um, victory point that they can easily control and then there's the center one where all the fight fighting is going to happen so let's get this started uh, replay beginning here and we'll see what happens so game is on pause and it's kind of helpful just to kind of see what everybody's doing uh, from the tactical map just because it lets me see all eight players at the same time and uh, I apologize if that's boring but we'll take a look around and uh, why don't we just kind of spin the camera around here and look at this kind of nice little industrial complex we have in the center of the map here this is always kind of some grueling fighting here uh, right in the center and then of course uh, there's these little smaller areas with important buildings this is right in front of the allies base and then a uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of a fighting area over here as well where we have these buildings guarding the fuel so pretty much uh, good good skirmishing areas this is always a nice little skirmishing fight area too uh, over here where this lumber yard is and that sort of thing lots of buildings uh, common thing we'll see very early on pretty much everybody is uh, going to occupy a building at some point in time just to make sure that they can prevent other people so right away you'll see that uh, Airco was you know occupying that before he goes and stabs inward to cap the fuel point so notice he extended all the way into the access territory and capped their fu fuel point right off the bat Meanwhile, we'll see some uh, little building defense going on here between uh, McKay and uh, Verse. And they are just going to go ahead and cap, it looks like, their little normal control area before advancing up to the fuel. So this was kind of an offensive grab of the Axis fuel, but uh, he knew he was going to get pushed back right away and therefore just occupied the building. So note that uh, for the most part, not everybody went and capped their most logical first uh, position in front of their base. Pretty much the fighting kind of focused around defending fuel points right away. Uh, you'll see a little bit of skirmishing going on here. It looks like these engineers taking some casualties. Going to have to retreat. Single pioneer left. Moderately healthy. 
And the Special Operations Pioneers by Sweeb are going to be moving around out here. Special op Operations Pioneers uh, can cloak and capture while cloaked and that sort of thing. Uh, looks like they may have been going on a Special Operations there. So, uh, first couple of units are coming out on the field now for everybody. Uh, over here we'll see Versus got his uh, Katzenmeyer's Volksgrenadiers. For the most part, I would imagine most combat heavy units are going to be level 5 for all these players because they all have lots of games. And we do have the close combat Volksgrenadiers coming out for McKay. It looks like he produced those first and is now producing a motorcycle. And we'll take a look down here. So for all of these players, uh, they all just got their Wehrmacht quarters out right away and uh, produced some early units. You can see the uh, uh, Burgers Panzer Pioneers here taking some damage and having to retreat. However, the rest of these engineers being shot up by these Pioneers over there. So uh, we will see uh, that Airco, uh, sorry, Giannis got a weapon support center. Airco got a barracks really far back. And I'd just like to note that it's always better to have a barracks kind of closer to resupply. Uh, weapon support center for Hush Hush and barracks for Ahist. So we've got a mix of weapon support and uh, regular barracks units going on for both players. Uh, good use of the motorcycle here, keeping its distance, putting pressure on these engineers. Kind of exactly what this motorcycle is good for early game. Just kind of maneuvering around where necessary. Uh, you'll see that they have captured, uh, the allies have captured their first victory point. And meanwhile, uh, even setting up some early game mines out there. That's kind of nice, just knowing where the defensive areas are going to be, defending their fuel as much as they can. Um, and for the most part, just kind of fighting around here. We have Wilson's Rifleman uh, engaging the close combat Volksgrenadiers. Way too close. Uh, looks like the Wilson's Rifleman are going to take some serious casualties. The MP40s from the close combat Volks combined with them being level 5. Really, really uh, dangerous unit there. Uh, close combat Volks, uh, they do well have the MP40s. They also have this uh, combat, you know, they can throw three grenades. This uh, assault grenades trick. And it uh, looks like a single mortar shot landing over here. We'll notice that Hush Hush was very quick to get out both a destructive mortar team and a regular mortar team. So it looks like he's pretty much uh, combining his efforts with a Heast over here. Uh, a Heast is going to have to provide all the infantry support, whereas a even a third mortar team now out for Hush Hush. So Hush Hush is just kind of massing mortar teams uh, so that he can just kind of get a good push going here on the right. Let's take a look at what's happening on the left. We do have a big old blob of infantry here being kind of, you know, just hanging out more or less. Double snipers from Giannis GR. So Giannis going for snipers right away. Uh, pretty much no other infantry for him. So again, we've got the weapon support center and the um, barracks combination on this side. Double sniper. Oh, putting some serious pressure on the Burgers Panzer Pioneers. Going to have to retreat. Uh, we will see that Leon Ra has got his Fatherland HMG team, which is now putting some good suppressing fire up there. Katzenmari's Volksgrenadiers doing their thing, but uh, likely are going to uh, bump into some sniper action going on. Double snipers. Oh, counter snipe going on by Sweeb over here. Uh, takes out one of the two snipers and gets away with his life while the other sniper is forced to retreat. Uh, Special Operations Pioneers looking a little exposed here, going to have to get out of here. Sniping still continuing. And let's take a look on the right. You can see that understanding that this is a really important fuel cap, uh, it looks like Ahist has gone out of his way to make sure that he's just sitting in this building as long as possible. Unfortunately now the uh, Flame Pioneers from McKay have showed up and they're just going to toast this building, finally shooing them all out of here and allowing him to advance a bit further. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like the uh, Field Pioneers are finally capping this position. And uh, a medic station going up right in the front. So we got this nice little grouping of mortar teams here. Uh, just kind of laying down the fire wherever they can. Uh, we do have a forward barracks up for verse here as well. Defended by a Fatherland HMG team. So they've got pretty solid control of the middle here. Scooting back over here to the left, we see the sniper now with four kills. And the flame pioneers coming in to put some pressure on Wilson's rifleman. Uh, meanwhile, Wilson's rifleman getting some good flanking on the Fatherland HMG. But they just don't have enough time to do damage uh, because of the pressure from the sniper and the, father and the uh, flame pioneers. Uh, will the sniper get one more kill? Bazooka Joe, run away! There he goes. All right, Bazooka Joe is going to be okay for today. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like the combination push here from just these regular Volksgrenadiers and the close combat Volks are now finally putting some pressure on the fuel point. Uh, HMG, uh, sorry, Motorcycle is uh, also putting some little bit of pressure here, and it's more than these guys can deal with for the time being. Hush Hush has retreated all of his uh, all of his mortars to this side and is now just kind of backing them up with the sniper. So, uh, sniper is going to have to sniper and mortar are going to have to put some pressure on this father and HMG team because it's kind of more than these infantry can charge into. Luckily, Ahis can afford to push out here often, and uh, because he's so close to his base, that retreating is not that detrimental. Uh, but for the most part, the axes here are relying on their forward barracks. So, pushing up, pushing up pretty strong. We'll see that a single very wounded uh, HMG team, probably a skilled HMG team, is hanging out here. Only one guy left there. Burgers Panzer Pioneer is moving up, and the Fatherland HMG team will probably have range to take that out since they're in friendly territory. No, probably just outside of max range. But uh, a little bit of pressure coming here from this motorcycle. Probably going to take out that that unit there. 
And we'll just see really dominating presence here. Fatherland HMG team has now moved up from this position into this uh, into this little building here. And it looks like they're getting out of the way because they do see a good amount of mortar strikes coming in right now. Double mortar team putting some pressure. Didn't mention it before. Uh, oh, again, we've got a second Fatherland HMG team over here by McKay. Uh, so the combination of double fi uh, Fatherlands are really putting some pressure on these guys. And uh, they're going to have to get out there with their mortar team. Uh, whoa, mortar team looks like it just took out the close combat folks. No, they took out the uh, took out the HMG team over here. The Fatherland HMG team goes down. By the way, this destructive mortar team has a few abilities, but uh, at level five, it can call down um, a pretty hefty artillery strike, uh, which is probably what we're seeing right here, actually. Uh, yes, this destructive mortar team by Giannis GR is dropping down artillery strikes. So if for like 130 or 135 munitions, something like that. It's pretty expensive, but it does call down a good sized artillery strike at level five. Uh, so undoubtedly, that's why they've both got it pretty good uh, to be able to artillery strike as an armor commander, uh, especially in five versus five or four versus four games. Meanwhile, though, uh, even though that's that's been going off, Katzenmeyer's Volksgrenadier is still coming up and, and causing a retreat. So for the most part, Wilson's still hanging out, Katzenmeyer's still hanging out. Uh, kind of a no man's land has been established up here. Good use of the uh, Ford Medic Bunker, though. That's definitely going to get some kills, what with all the pushing going on. And the mortar team is still trying to put some pressure. And the sniper is taking everybody out. Look at that one one HMG guy left. Uh, this sniper has got five kills now. Uh, good use of uh, good use of the uh, weapon support center units here. Just kind of a good combination. You need infantry to do the pushing and to fight the other infantry, but you really need the snipers and the mortars to actually advance the cause. What with all the Fatherland HMG teams and that sort of thing out there. So. Uh, everybody else here is looking pretty good, pretty resupplied. Uh, the Germans are doing a great job at using this. You can see a little scout plane going on there. <coughs> Motorcycle just kind of laying in wait, but uh, good, solid, strong control here. Denying a single fuel point is uh, uh, pretty advantageous at this point. And uh, capping deep into their territory. You can see trying to deny a second fuel point. The very first Greyhound armored car coming out for Airco. Let's take a look around at their, their bases. We'll see Giannis does have his motor pool up, uh, undoubtedly producing a Greyhound. Another motor pool going up, and nothing yet. It looks like a Trias Center going up for uh, Heath because he's got so many infantry. Big fight going on here right now. Uh, we have massive, just massive infantry here on the left, getting really close. Oh, those are their own mines. Haha, <laughs> no problem at all there. Big infantry, but look at the suppressing power going on here from this Fatherland HMG team. All these guys are just going to have to back away. Not sure why he built 